In this lesson on data frames, we show how they are built out of simpler functions like lists and vectors and also talk about a variation of data frames called tibbles. My name is Steve Baskoff. I'm from the Digital Scholarship and Communications Office at the Jean and Alexander Hurd Libraries of Vanderbilt University. If you found your way to this video from some other place besides our lessons page, you can find out about other lessons in this series by going to vanderbilt.lt slash code graph. A list is a data structure that's similar to the vectors that we have already seen. Like vectors, they are one-dimensional data structures. However, they can be heterogeneous. That means that the items that make up a list do not have to be the same kind of thing. For example, here we had items that are strings and numbers and even uh, more complicated things such as vectors. One difference between vectors and lists is that it's very common to give each item in the list a name. It is possible to do this in vectors, but it's much less common than it is in lists. If we want to create a list, we can do it with a function called, not surprisingly, list. We simply take the items on the list and uh, list them along with their names as name value pairs and separate each one with commas. Each of the items names comes before an equal sign and after the equal sign you refer to the item in an appropriate way if it's a string it's in quotation marks if it's a number it's plain if it is a more complicated data structure then you can refer to it by name so in this case the vector name is being assigned to a named part of the list called vector data each of those items and of course is uh, that list of items is wrapped inside parentheses that follows the list function and here I've assigned that list to a named object called thing. I'm going to start by recreating a vector that we used in the previous lesson, a vector containing the name of some animals. So here that vector has been created in the console and now it is appearing in the global environment. Here is the statement where I create the list that contains a string, a number, and also that vector that I just created. I can see that the list has been created because it's showing up in my environment. However, it does not show me all the items on the list. That's a little bit different from what our studio does with vectors. And we can see the reason for that because a list can be more complicated. We can see what the contents are of a list by finding its listing in the global environment and clicking on it, and then the contents of the list will show up in the upper left pane. If I click on the name of the list here, I will see a more detailed description of what is contained on the list over in the pane in the upper left. So here it shows me that my list called thing has four items in it. And then it describes the four things. And we can see why it's described in this ta tabular form here, because each of the items itself is different. So I need more space to say what kind of thing it is. And in the case of vector that I added to the list, I can actually see the items that were on that particular item within the list. If we want to refer to particular items on the list, we can do it in a manner similar to the way we've referred to items in vectors. The syntax is slightly different, but if we want to refer to an item in a list by its position, all we have to do is put its index number inside two sets of square brackets, which differs from vectors, which just have one set of square brackets. Because items on lists are typically referred to by name, there's actually kind of a shortcut way of referring to an item on a list, and that is to take the list name, then use a dollar sign, and then put the name of the item following the dollar sign. 
So this is the, probably the most commonly used way to refer to a list item. First of all, referring to a list item by position, we, if we want to refer to the second item of the list, we use this notation here. If you're a Python user, recall that indices in R are one-based, not zero-based. So if we are asking for the second item on the list, we use a two, not a one. So the second item on the list should be this number here. Let's go ahead and execute this line and see what happens. Here it shows me that the second item is indeed the number that I asked about. And here, if I want to refer to the item by its name, I can use the dollar sign notation. And here it tells me that the second item on the list is this string of characters here. So to review the key differences between vectors and lists, a vector must be homogeneous. It can only contain one kind of item, whereas lists can contain any different kind of item. Another difference is that we often name list items. Vector items can be named, but oftentimes we don't. And the other thing is that typically vector items are referenced by their position or index number, whereas list items are commonly referred to by their name using the dollar sign notation.